Oh, people are not showing their face. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I see a lot of names and some one face. <laughs> um. Hello. Oh, there I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, your faces are starting to appear. <laughs> hey, hi, Bonnie. Hi, Maria. Good to see you. Good to see Hello. everybody. Good to see everybody. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Laura. Is that Laura? Yes. Hi there. Hi, Laura. Hi, Peggy. <laughs> I'm working on my camera. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're, take your time. You know how to do the uh, stop video. And yep. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm just positioning myself so you you can not see all the laundry. <laughs> <Here you. laughs> I'm in my. Bed. I hear you. Yeah, a lot of us are in our bedrooms. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm in my basement, so I'm Bobby, <laughs> Peggy. <laughs> Hi, Beth. I don't. I I see your name, and I see Susan Wides. Not your face. Hi, Hi Bonnie. It's Susan. Hi. Yeah, it's your choice. You can. We'd love to see your face, but. Hi. You're right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to see everyone. Yes, really. This is Beth, but my camera doesn't work on my laptop. Okay, well, we can hear your voice. So can you see all of us? I can. Okay, cool. We'll just, we'll be happy to hear your voice. Hey everyone, it's Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. I'm kind of zoomed out. I've had five meetings today. So I I'm gonna, hear I'm you. the camera off. Sorry, you guys. That's totally <laughs> fine. And I see Kelly is here. I see her name. Okay. I think um, just to be fair about starting on, uh, we're a little off time, but we thought we would start uh, in a minute or so. And then if there are people that wander in, that's fine. Um, hello and welcome everybody. Um, it's really good to see uh, old friends' faces and new friends' faces. Um, I'm Bonnie Rose Marcus, and I'm the director of the Readings and Workshops Program East and Writers Exchange at Poets and Writers. And um, I wanna just introduce some of our staff and just give a little bit of a thank you. Um, Ricardo um, Hernandez um, is the program associate at Readings and Workshops East. And he is my fabulous co-host. Um, without him, this technology would not happen. I'm, 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 um, this is not my expertise. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to him for that and many other things. I'd like to also introduce Dan Tran Kong Huen, who has been our fabulous um, Joseph McCrindle fellow, paid fellow this year for about almost nine months. Um, she's been a, a joy to work with and has helped so much on these, proje on these projects. Um, and also, where's Jamie? Jamie Fitzgerald, which is a real treat to have her here. She is the director of Readings and Workshops West out in California. And we've been collaborating on planning e meetings east and west. So she's here to support um, the East Coast staff. And um, so we're very happy to have her here. So um, I just want to, um, OK, good. I'm totally new to this, so please be patient with me. But it's really great to connect with you all. Um, we wanted to, um, we've posted on the, first I'm going to just do a little bit of technical tips for those of you that are new to this. Um, so you can you can see at the top of the screen, there's speaker view or gallery view. And I always like gallery view because I can see everybody. But if you want to see the speaker more larger, you can go to speaker view. Um, on the bottom, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, uh, symbols. Uh, the microphone will keep you muted or keep yourself muted. And when we have the question and answer period, you can unmute yourself. That helps with the sound quality. Um, um, there's a chat on the side here, which you're welcome to use to share any information. And we are gonna have a question and answer period, but um, if you have a question you feel more comfortable putting in the chat, that's fine too. Um, and also there's a, um, when we do question and answers, there's a, 
there is something in the chat that says you can raise your hand or you can just do it like this and I'll call on you. Um, I think that uh, Ricardo is posting the simple agenda in the chat and then I'm just going to give a little bit of an introduction um, and then we'll get to the guidelines. Um, I know this has been a really difficult time for all of us and at Poets and Writers, um, we really, um, we've been working remotely since probably the middle of March um, and trying our best to see how we could best serve our communities uh, at this time. And the readings and workshops program, some of you, I think all of you are familiar with our program. I, I know that there's a lot of sponsors and writers here who have got funding from us, but in case you're not, since 1970, we've been a mini grant program that pays writers to give readings or conduct workshops in, at venues and organizations all over the state of New York, California, and eight other cities. Um, and so when we realized we weren't going to be able to fund live events, we began to contemplate the idea of funding for virtual events, virtual live events. Um, and we felt it was really important to keep the program going for many reasons. Um, one, we want to support writers. We want to continue to pay writers, which is, which is a huge part of this program. And especially at this time when many people have lost income and have lost jobs, even though they're modest grants, we were really, uh, really wanted to keep this going and be able to support writers in this way. We also wanted to be able to continue to support community and community events and bring literature to the widest possible public. Um, one of the one of our part of our mission mandate is to really be able to fund underserved communities, um, communities of color and communities that don't necessarily get an opportunity to hear a live reading or to be participate in a workshop. So we really wanted to be able to keep all this going. Um, so we said, well, we're going to we're going to be flexible here and we're going to temporarily make this a virtual grant program. Um, so um, we're, you know, and it's, it's slowly happening. At first, of course, we were all, all of us were in the position of not knowing what was going on, how we were going to deal with all of this. And so slowly, slowly, we're getting more applications and we're reaching out to people that have applied to us in the past to see if they're interested in doing a virtual event or, or the other option of rescheduling. So I think at this point, uh, maybe um, Ricardo, do you want to post the, okay, so, okay, just back up a little bit. We're going to share our virtual guidelines, and then we're going to have a question and answer period if you have questions about the guidelines. And then we're going to have a community sharing to hear from you about how you're doing in your literary communities. If you've, ex you know, ideas that you've had, projects that maybe you've worked on or you want to work on, um, some challenges you faced and maybe some tips that you have for other people here um, as well. Um, and just also to note that we are recording this meeting, which we will end, we'll be posting on our webpage uh, for other people to be able to share in this information. Um, so, Ricardo, should we go to the PowerPoint? I really want to thank Jamie Fitzgerald for putting together this PowerPoint for us to use both here and in the West. I'm very grateful to her for that. So here we are. So before we go through to the first slide, I just want to say, because this isn't on the slides, that um, the process of, of applying is still the same, which is that applications need to come from the sponsoring organization or venue on behalf of a writer. And this can be initiated in two ways, like it is normally for live events. Sponsors can reach out to writers who they want to bring, who they want to bring to their community, in this case, a virtual community. Uh, or writers can initiate this on behalf of themselves to work with a particular venue or organization that they feel connected to or they want to offer their, you know, their workshop or their reading. So I just wanted to say that about the process. Okay, I think we can go to the... Okay, so um, yes, in response to COVID-19, uh, obviously we couldn't meet publicly. Um, we are temporarily for as long, we don't know how long this is going to be, but we are going to be making mini grants to support virtual live events. Um, and um, the guidelines, um, the process, as I explained, is the same. Um, but as we go through the slides, you'll see there's just a couple of points that are slightly different. Um, so we can move forward. 
So one of the things that we decided to try to keep it as close to a live event as possible, even though of course it's not live and it's nothing like live, but virtual reading should be live streamed through an audio or video platform, which is open to the public, not passport protected or behind a paywall. And this is also for us, for our mission to really provide, you know, to be able to make sure that we reach as wide a public as we can. Um, if possible, we encourage recording virtual readings and archiving them through publicly accessible platforms such as YouTube or Vimeo. But this is an encouragement. If this is not something that you are comfortable doing, that's okay. Um, virtual readings should have live audio and video components. Um, we're not funding podcasts or radio broadcasts. So for virtual writing workshops, uh, this would include real-time online instruction of the workshop attendees by a live facilitator and can be open or closed to the public depending on the workshop type. So we already are funding, uh, we have several senior writing workshops that have been incredibly uh, grateful to be able to have their writing workshops uh, through, they're doing it through Zoom. Um, and in those workshops, they've been meeting for a long time and they have a cap on the number of people. So that would mean, you know, up to the facilitator, not open to the public, or perhaps it's a space that, um, like a crisis center, where they just wanna make it available to the people that, that come to their crisis center for that particular, for their particular mental health. Um, but they also must have live audio and video components. And of course, if you want the workshop to be open to a larger public, that's up to the facilitator and the sponsor as well. Okay, so this is just like a, a point for the sponsor who's filling out the application. Um, the event site, which normally would be, uh, you know, a site that people went to, you can just list the sponsoring organization's mailing address. And this is also good for the writer to know if they're helping or a sponsor or initiating event um, that you know this information as well. And so as usual, we, we do consider virtual events that charge a fee. Uh, right now, especially, we are prioritizing applications for events that are free or low cost, knowing that everybody right now, or most people right now, are in difficult financial times. And this, uh, this point is, is different. Normally, um, as sponsors who have worked with us before know, we mail the check for the writer directly to the sponsor so that the sponsor can give it to the writer at the reading or at the end of the workshop series. Um, obviously we can't do that now. So the check will be mailed directly to the writer and it's gonna take us a little longer than usual because we're all working remotely. And so there's many moving pieces here. So it might take up to two weeks at least after the event for the writer to receive the check. And we are contacting all writers before we mail the check to confirm their mailing address, knowing that some people are sheltering in places other than their regular home address. So we will be doing that um, before we mail the writer the check. And in terms of reporting about the event, this is pretty much the same. Um, we ask that event organizers and writers complete brief reports to let us know how the event went, how many participated. And we use these because we can't visit all the sites and we use these for fun, fundraising purposes. Funders really love you know, anecdotes and to hear about the various programs that we fund so that we can get additional funds <laughs> to offer to the writers. And as always, event organizers and sponsors are responsible for ensuring that publicity materials carry the appropriate credit lines and logos, which you can download from our webpage, and if possible, uploading copies of their publicity with their report. Um, that's really helpful for us as well. And um, typically, um, we, you know, there's a spot on the application for the sponsor, what the sponsoring organization may be able to contribute to the fee. Um, we are not requiring this now at all. I mean, we, we, we always have leeway with this because we know that uh, not all organizations have literary budgets, but right now, especially, um, we are not, you know, we don't require a match or a portion of the writer's fee. Of course, if the sponsor is able to do this, great because we want to give the writer as much money as we can, but it's not uh, required. And then um, just so you know, I mean, because virtually means, you know, pretty much anybody can come, but we're sticking to our, to our geographical regions and cities. So we, the sponsoring organizations still must be located in one of our 
states, New York or California, or in any of our cities that we have funding for, Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, Houston, Seattle, New Orleans, Tucson, and Washington, DC. And to try to accommodate, you know, um, the time and the virtual world and the time that we're living in here, we've shortened our application deadline to four weeks in advance. It's typically six to eight. Um, and we, you know, we always ask people to call us if you're a little short of the deadline, give us a call. I mean, give us an email <laughs> um, and, um, you know, we can talk it through, but, but we're trying to do like a four week in advance of the event date deadline for these virtual events. And then we're very happy now that the event calendar on our website, which typically it was can, people listed their live events for free, um, is now opening up to listing virtual events. And we really encourage you to use our calendar. We're trying to make this a place that people can find so many different, um, you know, readings and workshops and literary events. So take uh, advantage of this um, uh, by posting your virtual event on our calendar. And uh, if you have any questions about this program or you want to talk with us about an idea you have or you're having technical difficulties with the application, anything, we're a very, we, we love talking to people. Well, it'll be mostly email. You can leave a message on this voicemail here. I check my messages every day and I would call you back from myself, from myself, from myself, myself, email rw-east at pw.org. And um, myself or Ricardo or Dan Tran will get back to you um, and have a conversation about your question or your concern. So, wow, okay. So there it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm gonna just open it up for any questions or comments. And you know, you can raise your hand here or you can go to the chat and there is, um, there's, it should be a hand raising little signal there. I can't see it on mine because of the host co-host thing here, but I can see you all clearly. So, or Beth, if you, if you need to raise your hand, you can just, um, you can speak because I can't see you. Any questions or, yeah, is it Charles? Oh, Hardy, Hardy, hi. Yeah, you can Hardy, unmute yourself. Yeah, Hardy. Hi, hi, Hardy. Are you a writer or a presenter or both or? I'm a presenter, I'm a presenter. Uh, and also uh, I work with Community Arts Partnership in Ithaca, New York. Oh, great, great, great. Welcome, um, nice to meet you. Thank you, likewise, thank you. I had a question about, um, we were considering having um, a reading event that would be a, a fundraiser. I'm wondering if that, if there's any, if that would not be looked at as, you know, is a good uh, candidate for this or? Uh, you're, you're in uh, which county? Uh, Tompkins County. Um, I think I, we have done that in the past. I, uh, what's the fundraising for? Uh, it's a fundraising for, it would be for um, uh, arts grants, basically to Tompkins County artists who are, who are suffering because of the situation. I mean, I think that we would be very open to that. I mean, this okay. is an unusual time. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Yes, Susan. Hi. Remind me, I know your name, um, but remind me of your organ. You're, you're muted. Unmute. Sorry. Remind, remind me of your organization. Uh, I'm the director and curator of T-Space in Rhinebeck. Right. Um, thank you. Um, so, I, the first um, guideline was uh, the, the event should not be password protected or behind a paywall. And then what was the rest of that? It was there, it needs to be recorded and put on a website? No, uh, no we, you know, your, your reading should be live on a, on, a, on, a, on a platform that you feel comfortable with. People have been using Zoom. Other people have been using, was it, is it Google? Uh, Ricardo knows this better than me. Um, but if we're just saying as a possibility, if you want to record these um, on publicly accessible platforms such as YouTube or Vimeo, is another way to get the reading out to more people. But it's not an obligation. It's not, it's not going to affect the funding. 
Okay. It's just a recommendation. Yeah, no, I think it's really a good idea. I just wasn't sure if that was, I missed part yeah. of that. So Ricardo, did you want to add something to that? Um, yeah, so I actually just dropped the uh, full uh, wording from the first slide into the chat, Susan. So if you want to oh, okay. um, grab that. Um, yeah, and I think, um, yeah, Google Hangouts was, a, was the other program. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Great. And what county is that in Rhinebeck? It's, um, it's Dutchess County. That's right. Oh, and you know what? Dutchess County, you should definitely apply to us. It, in, in normal times, it's an underfunded county. So we look always to do more funding in that county. Well, that so, is very good to hear. Encouragement to you. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we'll have two, two live uh, opening events this summer that will include poetry, music, and a virtual art exhibition. So well, I guess I guess it'll depend. I mean, great to plan, but I, maybe you should also have a virtual uh, backup because we, we just don't know. I mean, we're not going to be funding live events until it's safe to do so. And I have oh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, oh, you meant virtual live. Virtual live. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? You're all seasoned, um, seasoned. Laura, did you have any questions? Not to put you on the spot, just want to see if you did. I have a, a question and a comment. <laughs> cool. Uh, Cynthia put this stuff in the chat, Cynthia Manic did, but I want to uh, re I want to uh, kind of like Thank jump on okay. it as well. Um, because of Zoom bombing and people interrupting meetings, that's why we usually have a password or something to enable people to join the meeting without others interfering. So passwords are important because, you know, you can be in the middle of something and, and someone will come on that you're not expecting and ruin the whole session. Thankfully, it hasn't happened. But um, thank you, Cynthia, for putting that in the chat. Um, the other thing is um, uh, we've been having a lot of success and we put, uh, I'm, I'm doing workshops through Art Defined. The only concern that I'm having, and I, I'll email to follow up, is that I am not receiving the um, reporting that I have to do as the person who facilitated the workshop. And I think there's some confusion because I have to use a different email when I ask for funding for my own readings, as opposed to being a facilitator for Art Defined. So I don't know where the emails are going. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked Art Defined Inc. to reach out to you because I'm concerned. I don't want um, them to lose funding because I didn't do my part. But I think that there's, there's two different emails and I don't know where it's going. So as a person who organizes readings, I have that email and then I have the other email for when I'm facilitating. So I'm gonna follow up with an email, but I wanted just to let you know that some of us get invited to read and then I, don't, I did not see any reports and I've done two so far on Zoom and I kept saying like, where's the report? Usually I see Bonnie's email show up right away <laughs> and I'm like, I'm on it, but I haven't seen them. So I'm just wanna, you know, it's just a point of concern because I don't want it to affect the funding. And we started out in the Bronx Mm -hmm. branched out to like everywhere. I have people from California, Arizona, Chicago, and they're getting more and more popular. So we want to continue it. We just don't want to keep it, you know, I just want to be consistent with my part of it. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. Thank you. Um, you know, the our online grant management system has some glitches. Um, I think you mentioned that you have two separate emails, one is a sponsor, one is a writer, so you should be getting those reports. So like, we need to look into that. It might be something that we have to ask for help from our, from the people that, uh, you know, what would you say, um, no more than us that, that, run, that, we, that we lease the program from. So I'm sorry that's happened. We would never just not give funding because you didn't send in your report. We always give people a chance. So just let us like work with that technical difficulty. Ricardo, you wanna say something? Yeah, so Peggy, I can, uh, I'll probably follow up with you, if not later this evening, um, and I'll send an email to um, the organization email that you have. It's a problem that we just call it the two hat problem, because again, like folks, part of the community, they're, you know, function as facilitators and program uh, yeah. leaders. So I can follow up with you, and it's something that we can sort out relatively easily, and then we can get you set up with that. Um, That's great. That's a perfect. I just wanted to because it's in the chat and I know Beth um, is present but is not sort of like showing. She did ask a question, so maybe I'll just read it out and then Bonnie, you can take the lead on it. Um, so Beth is asking, what is the time period for the grant cycle 
and what is the maximum grant amount per organization? So uh, I'm not sure I understand about the time period. So in other words, it's four weeks. We have a four week deadline for the organization. Um, and we are um, the maximum grant amount per organization in our guidelines is 1500. Um, and, you know, of course, we can't always do that. Uh, but at this particular time, because we, you know, there were two months probably March and April, where we, like a lot of organizations, just suspended their programming. So we do have funds available, and we really encourage people to apply to us, especially now. Um, I don't think I'm asking the, the answering the first part of your question. Ricardo, do you have a, you have a, an under, I'm, I'm just not clear about it, what her question is. Um, or Beth, you want to say? Yeah, I mean, she, uh, Beth asked a follow-up, or it's like, is that 1500 for a calendar year? So uh, if I'm understanding, Beth, you are, I'll clarify, like, so our, our funding begins um, July 1st of a year and it goes on until June 30th of the next. So this current year is still ongoing um, and it'll, um, we'll have the funding for now until June 30th and then we'll sort of restart the clock. The 1500 is for the fiscal year. Um, so if, for an, if an organization, let's say Bonnie's organization wants funding uh, we'll sort of start keeping track from July 1st all the way through June 30th of the next year, and then it'll, you know, the, the slate gets wiped clean. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that's, that's if I'm sensing the, your question. Yeah, and I think um, Jeffrey has a question here. Um, yes, you can just put zero. I don't think you, I think that the dollar sign is not you know, there's little quirks there, so it might, it doesn't accept the dollar sign. I don't no, I, I, I knew that. I wanted to make it clear that I, it was the slab <laughs> with the dollar sign to the left of it. Yes, I know. Hi, Jeffrey. Nice uh, to see I, you. I'm revealing myself. Could I, yeah. could I offer a couple of tips for the, uh, also along the lines of Zoom bombing and avoiding it, because I've done a few of these. Sure, now. please, please do. We're um, very new to this. It's, it's help. Uh, there's a number of settings. They're not, um, when you launch Zoom, they're not available to you. You have to do it from the website. There's a lot of other settings. Right. And um, there was a great article in the New York Times recently, you could just search for it. And you, if you just Google, you know, avoiding Zoom bombing, a few good articles will come up. But the main things you wanna do, definitely enable the waiting room. That's really important. Um, they now embed the password in a link, that's a choice. So if you use something like Eventbrite, which is what I've done with the Flowchart Foundation's events, that helps create one more barrier because people have to sign up. It's open to anyone, but they have to, you know, send in their email address first to get the free ticket. So that helps avoid bad behavior because you know who everybody is. Um, at the, if it's only you moderating the event, with the waiting room, it's best to have a third party letting people in, but like it's only been me. So uh, it's handy to know that um, at the point you're ready to start, you can just click um, let everybody in. So you can do it as a group. Then if someone does misbehave, you can, you can kick them out. But again, it's still best to have a third party helping. Um, the other things you wanna set, um, you wanna be sure to absolutely disable annotations Annotations is how people can write obscenities across the screen. So if you turn that off, no one can do that. You can also make it in the chat room, and I can see that you have this enabled. People can only send a chat to everyone or to the organizer. It's important to set it that way so that people cannot be organizing to be disruptive. With okay, one another, thank right? Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Do that. And the one oh. other one is to disable a uh, background screen so that people can't put pornography in back of okay. people doing the workshop. These are so all great tips. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm seeing another, I wanna go on to, I'm just, I'm seeing a question here about uh, the free Zoom account cuts off our meeting after 40 minutes. That is correct. Um, you know, you can kind of get around it, but it would be kind of disruptive for a reading um, and workshop by just then going back and making another meeting like 10 minutes later. But you know, that's just, you have, to, there's a membership. I, I don't know how much the, the um, that is true, Beth. So it's something that you have to figure out with your, oh, 1495, okay. Um, it's something that you have to figure out with your, with your, with yourself and your writer. We, at this point, we can't offer that as a part of our, you know, these grants are just for writer fees. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, you know, another mentioned earlier, we mentioned uh, on other platforms that are so Google Hangouts also is um, another platform that people have been using. Um, it's free so long as you have a Google account. Um, and I think they're pretty ubiquitous now. So that might be another option, Beth, because um, then, you know, it's you wouldn't have time limits and it has similar functions to something like Zoom or like, you know, you can have a video conferencing. I believe there's chat and screen sharing options um, in case, you know, uh, buying a Zoom membership just isn't possible. I would recommend that Google Hangouts. Question, Bobby Gonzalez, do uh, you hear me? Bobby. Yes, go ahead, Bobby. Uh, who creates the event? The sponsoring organization or the writer? In terms Good of question. the Zoom? No, for, uh, to apply for the grant, who? Oh, to apply for the grant. Creates the event. So if I go, I'm losing. Okay, so to apply for the event, the application needs to come from the sponsoring organization. But oh, okay. the writer, if they're doing the workshop, can set up the Zoom. If it's a Zoom meeting, they can set that up. It's just mm -hmm. that the application has to come from the sponsor. Thank you. So if there's um, not any questions about the, uh, the guidelines, um, I just wanted to open it up for you maybe to introduce yourself or to share or sh if you wanted to share something about what you're doing in your community um if you have suggestions for us or you want to talk about some challenges you have or tips that you have for other presenters or other writers we can take that opportunity to do that now ask a question Sh um, maria wait 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 laura. oh laura hi laura hi i have a question about something i read on Twitter, I believe, about Zoom fatigue. Have you heard about that? And what are the options if you're limited to either a virtual event or no event? I mean, it is, it is, a, it is a side effect of where we're at right now. Um, I think one of the suggestions is, you know, um, I think an hour or an hour and a half at the most is sort of a, an, enough of a time. I've been to some events that were two or three hours long and it's just way, way, way too much. So you really have to think about that. Um, and just like anything else, take care of yourself and pace yourself. I don't know, it is a whole different, it takes a lot more energy and we're not, we're not getting the same body language signals that we usually get. It, it is, it's, it, it's a challenge, but my experience visiting some of our programs and doing some of this zoom connecting in other aspects of my life is that it way beats not having any contact with people and it's it's a lifeline for me you know um i don't know what i would do without it i don't know if you wanted to comment ricardo because you had mentioned something about this at one of the meetings we were having about something you read not to put um i could i can uh speak <laughs> i'm working remote from home and um and i'm in higher education so a lot of it is zoom meetings back to back all day i find that i have to like literally get off of anything that has to do with social media or screen times for at least a couple of hours um sometimes i just take a whole day and not do anything um my organization latina 50 plus i just hosted a zoom meeting for um for, for the group and i picked the saturday afternoon i kept it to two hours and i found that people had more energy when you did it like i did it from one to three mm. and it went over by a little bit i had about 33 people it was my first zoom meeting so i was like a little kid yay look i got a zoom meeting um but because i do this intense zoom stuff at work and taking counseling appointments, it, it is exhausting, but you gotta know, you just have to be able to take it off, rest your eyes, and then pick it back up when you have some energy, because it can really be draining. Our system is being totally changed from being able to move around and be physical. So that's just my suggestion. Thanks so much, Maria. It's really helpful. 
I'm trying Jeffrey. to decide. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. Do you wait, want go to ahead. wait, Laura. Let's go back to Laura for a minute. Yeah, go ahead. I'm trying to decide how to move forward with our festival. We usually have it in July, and I'm considering doing it a half day on Saturday, and then maybe some evening workshops or evening readings, as opposed to doing a full day on Saturday, just because of the Zoom fatigue. Our April conference went well. It was a full day, but I think everyone felt the same level of energy. They weren't necessarily feeling as if it was too much, too many events or panels or workshops for the day. But by July, that might be different. So I'm, I'm still feeling my way through it all. And even looking at postponing it maybe until September. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. These are hard choices, you know? It's like, it's very hard because there's so much unknown. I mean, I think, um, you know, doing, splitting it up sounds like it might be more doable. Or, you know, if you feel like it's all too much, like waiting and doing it another time is also an option. It's a, you know, it, we all have to figure these things out. It's, it's, it's a whole new world, you know? And um, Laura, just a question. Do you have a, um, a committee that helps you with the festival? I do. Why would, don't you take a poll and see how they feel about breaking it up where you could do one, one session, one group of work of the work one day and then the other one, uh, cause I'm getting ready to redesign my diversity conference at my job. And that's one of the things that we're going to be doing in the fall. Cause it has a lot of workshops. Mm -hmm. So maybe see how everybody feels I and maybe they can give you some feedback. I did take a small poll and the good majority of them say that we should stick with the full day and then do like a reading one night. Um, last summer we did a reading on the Friday and then had the full day on Saturday, master classes on Sunday and master classes on Thursday. So it would be, it, I don't know. I just don't know where will be like every week there's there's something new that we're trying to absorb i think uh cynthia i, I think um zoom fatigue is real i definitely at work i'm in a team of 15 people so i'm in zoom meetings all day and so when i'm not at work i'm definitely in a no camera uh zone it's my picture being episode of my face I also think during readings, I've done a couple so far. I have one tomorrow, another one on Sunday. Also making sure the atmosphere is relaxed, meaning play music, make it more of an intimate conversation, less rigid, so people feel like they're at home instead of at a reading. That also helps with fatigue as well. And also do a check-in, like how do you feel? Ask the weather report. Give it, like, ask your people how do you feel during the reading. And also, I think the chat is a great function as well. People who don't want to be on camera, they can blow up the chat, they can make comments, they can repeat things they heard, they can do compliments. The chat is definitely a good way to engage the audience without getting fatigued. Thank you. That helps a lot. Great suggestions. Also, I've, known, I've done some full day classes outside of my work and, you know, we've taken, taking breaks like after an hour, just stretching a tea break, coming back, and you know, you can play, just, you know, getting the body going is, you know, is, is really important because we're sitting in front of the screen. So those are things you can do. And yeah, other suggestions were great. Other people want to share anything about their organization or their challenges or anything that's come up today? Um, um, I just wanted to share what something that worked that I learned how to use on Zoom, which is the breakout rooms. So mm. the first workshop, uh, it had about 20 people. So, and we were trying to enable it, but we didn't do it properly. Um, but the second one, we had over 30 people that joined and they joined in at different times. So even if the waiting, you know, like Cynthia said, you, you enable the waiting room and you kind of just see who it is and then let them in. But at what the breakout feature did, um, because the group got so big, when they came to generating writing and sharing, I would do breakout rooms and it was rooms and I, I formatted it so it would be rooms of four people. So we had tons of rooms and people really enjoyed that feature. They felt heard, they felt seen, 
they could read without, you know, having the whole screen be, you know, like a whole panel of people. And someone just sent me this um, text as we were talking and she said, I like the chat rooms very much. It promotes the intimacy and quiet conversations we are not having because of social distancing. The quiet voices participate and it slows down the process. Less is more. Thank you for getting us together and promoting friendship. So, you know, people at this time that, that live alone need, need that. They need some kind of companionship, even if it is virtual. So I encourage you to try the, the breakout rooms. It, we did it, like I said, um, I did it with Art to Find, and we were kind of nerve-wracked at first because there were so many, but I kept saying the smaller, the better. Let's, I don't care if there's like 20 of these rooms. Let's just try it and see. And the feedback has been like that all day. So yesterday's workshop was really successful because of that. And I would give them a prompt. We would go through a mentor text, give them a prompt, and then break out. And it just gave me also a time as the facilitator to go to the bathroom, to kind of get up and stretch. Because when you're doing a live workshop, it is very different from being with company of people. You are on performance from the moment the camera turns on and then you're facilitating in a different way. You have three screens, you have to share this one. You're creating presentations that you weren't expecting. So the prep work is a lot more. So the breakout rooms, I would set them up and give them a time and I would literally get up and stretch and walk around the basement and come back <laughs> because I was sitting for so long. And, um, and, and our workshop was two hours. I stopped at two hours. It didn't matter. And I gave them, I emailed them the last poem that we didn't get to because I honor the time, not just for them, but for myself. I couldn't do it. I was in a workshop last week because I'm taking as many as I can to learn how other people do it. And the workshop last week went over into three hours and I wanted to die because I, my body just physically couldn't sit any longer. I was like a kid with ADHD. I was losing my mind. I, and, and it was a great workshop. And I really wish that I had the, the capacity to sit through the end. And I, I stayed on, but I was live, I just, my brain was fried. So I agree with Cynthia. And I agree with um, Maria. Two hours is a good cap off um, or give breaks and say, log off, give yourself 15 minutes, log back in at this time. Because it is a lot for people to hand, you know, to, to deal with, to just be on. And as a facilitator, you're on. So if you're going to do, Laura, I know you're thinking of doing the all, all day. I participated in one that was all day, but we had increments, like I said, like breaks. So it was like 15 minute breaks between sessions so people can get up and get a snack and then come back. But it is exhausting. I, 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 I was exhausted. Yes, it was great, but I was exhausted physically. And I had to get up and do other things. So just keep that in mind as, as we move forward. I don't know if anyone has done virtual workshops yet. This was my second and I'm learning. Um, I just keep telling people I am learning because sometimes I can't do things that I thought I could do. I couldn't share my screen the first time. It was a hot mess and everyone had to come back in. Um, and it was my fault. I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. But I just keep saying we're all learning and everyone was very kind. But, um, and I anticipate for the next one for it to be better. So if anyone has questions or if anyone wants to share skills, I'm always open for that. Um, if you know a better way of doing it, I would appreciate um, contact and help. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's a, that's a, just a good segue too to say that we're going to have, you know, this is really just an introduction. I mean, this is all new to us as well, that we're having two more, well, probably more than two more, but two more are scheduled right now on, on the 12th. We're having um, Sarah Sala will be coming to speak with us about her uh, doing virtual readings with a little more detailed information and the following uh, Tuesday, the 19th, um, Alana Bell, who's been facilitating uh, one of our workshops with seniors and does many other online workshops, is going to come in and talk about what she, her, her, how she has done it and some of her tips and successes. Um, but thanks for all of that, Peggy. Those were good. Those were great tips. Um, and um, so are, is, did anybody else want to share that didn't have a chance? Um, I want to make sure everybody's voice was heard who, wasn't, who did not speak. Um, everybody feels heard, nuts, yogurt, apples, <laughs> food, yes, Jamie is saying, go get food, <laughs> even if you're on a Zoom uh, <laughs> event. Um, hi, Elliot, Elliot Figman is here from Poets and Writers, uh, Executive Director, so grateful to his guidance through all of this, <laughs> he's coming to pay us a little visit here. Um, so. Um, if there aren't other questions or people don't want to share, we do have, uh, we wanted to share some 
is, is, does everyone feel like they have had a chance to speak and share? Raise your hand or speak out if you haven't. Yes? Okay. So we're gonna share on the screen um, just some of the other things that poets and writers, um, other resources that poets and writers has on our webpage uh, for you to explore. And we'll also send this out to people, but I thought we'd just go, go through it briefly. Ricardo, do you wanna put that on the screen? So, so yes, there's lots going on on our website. So um, resources for writers in the time of the coronavirus um, is a helpful list for writers, teachers, publishers, and booksellers, um, which is updated regularly by our editorial staff. Um, encourage you to visit The Time Is Now for free writing prompts, and they're gonna be doing more of these at a more frequent pace. Um, and you can sign up to get The Time Is Now delivered to your inbox. Um, stay inspired with our online exclusives, craft capsule, capsules, writers recommend. Um, and um, if you wanna check our submission calendar for grants and awards, as well as the GNA contest blog, this is a great time to send out your work. Um, as usual, our databases are there for your, for your use, literary magazines and small presses. Um, and this is a great opportunity to either uh, update your, direct, your listing in our directory. Um, if you're a writer that's not listed, please check it out and see if you're eligible. I think there are now over 10,000 writers there, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a great way to be seen on, in this directory and to include all of your credits. Um, Daily News is, stays up to date on all the news that creative writers need to know. Um, and um, you can look and explore free digital services like Zoom, Google, Hangouts, Join Me, free conference call, or Skype. Um, and it's saying to check out your local library's e-lending options and take advantage of apps like Overdrive, which gives you free access to audiobooks and eBooks from many public libraries. And also what we mentioned in our, in our guidelines, we have an online calendar that typically just funded live events and now it's open for virtual events and we really encourage you, those who are going to be doing virtual events to list that on our calendar. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for more publicity. So we'll also send this out to people in an email, but we just wanted to share a bit of all of the things that we're doing um, to try to keep writers connected, especially during this time. Um, so please do take advantage of our web, uh, web offerings. So I think we're, um, we're any other comments or questions before we close out? Um, okay. So I want to thank you all for joining us. This was our first, we, we, um, this is new to all of us. And I'm again, very grateful for the RW staff, Ricardo, Dan Tran, Jamie, um, for helping to get this together. And um, we're gonna try to do more town hall meetings, maybe make them more national in the future, but we wanted to start out in our region um, to just get practice <laughs> at doing all of this. So thank you so much for coming, uh, for being here, for sharing your knowledge and your challenges. And please feel free to contact us um, through the email rw slash east at pw.org. Um, and we'll be happy to have more conversations with you about what you're doing, your challenges, any kind of technical assistance you need, and just sharing resources with each other during this time. It's so important, I think more than ever, um, to be able to connect and to connect through poetry and fiction and creative nonfiction and somehow keep our, our spirits and our community alive and well uh, with so much you know, challenging suffering around us. So take good care of yourself, everybody. Um, be safe, stay connected with your community and your friends and your family and much thanks for being who you are and being here with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you, Bonnie. Thank you so much.